Hello everybody, it's Keith Barry here, and on today's show, we've got Alexandra Alabad. Hey, how are you? Hello, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Great, thanks. Very nice to meet you. So, um, you know, I'm curious about the world. I'm curious about people. And I stumbled across you on Instagram. And you do a lot of things, kind of like me. So I do a lot of different things. Uh, I'm an entertainer. I'm a mentalist. I'm a hypnotist. I'm a hypnotherapist. And it seems to me that in, in your world, you do a lot of things. So in a couple of sentences, describe to us who you are and what you do. All right. Awesome. Firstly, like, thanks for asking me to come here. And I'm like sure. so interested about uh, hypnotism and all this. I've been like watching like many YouTube guys of hypnotism and it's like so interesting. But anyways, all right. So uh, yeah, my name is Alexandra and I'm from Finland. And in a couple of sentences, what I do. Huh, so if people, if you people there know what Tantra is, I would say that I'm a Tantrika. I'm a person who loves the energy world and world and how to connect to your inner source and a place of um, yeah a place of inner fire and how you can utilize this inner place of fire to the best benefit in your everyday life and uh, yeah how you can live life in amazing energies and full purpose and with joy <laughs> great and where did you learn a lot of this like are you self-taught do you have a mentor uh, how did you learn? Yeah, at the moment I have a mentor and I'm uh, in the school with Leila Martin. She's an excellent, excellent tantrika. Uh, she's been studying um, sex education and also tantra for over a decade now. And she's just amazing. But how I started uh, was I was in Australia and there it was kind of like this after high school thing, you know, when you want to just go out and explore the world. And yeah. I started to see, yeah. I started to see like things which I haven't seen in school before. And I was like, all right, interesting. So there's a whole world out here. But I didn't really get into yoga or meditation or tantra back then. But I came to Finland and here was a friend who I haven't met for, yeah, like since we were like small kids. And he was meditating and he introduced me to meditation. And I started to um, have these mystical experiences, you could say, like uh yeah like I saw like I don't know some colors and that kind of stuff when I closed my eyes and it was just like these things I could feel in my body and like I could also start to see things in me which were very much not for my highest good and I was like whoa what what is this you know and then yeah. I started to continue so it was kind of like self-taught but then I went back to the world and in Asia and um, yeah, mostly in Asia and in India, I had some like schools and great, great teachers who have then taught me further in this past. So, so when you mentioned these things, these kind of magical experience from meditation and so on, what's been the most kind of mystical experience that you've had? Is there like one experience that you could pick that actually kind of blew your mind wide open? Mm -hmm. ah, there's like a few. Um, okay, so... I I have three that comes to my head, which are okay. like, uh, like mystical, yeah. So one is, which is like, um, I, I was feeling really low at one point in my life. Like I couldn't, I was always, I like to be with people and so on. But then some people, I guess, call it the, the dark night of the soul. And maybe this was happening to me. I'm not sure. But I felt really, really, really low in my life. And I went to this one meditation course and I could... Like after after meditation, I just felt like I was on drugs, you know, and yeah. I used to take drugs before. And maybe that was the reason I was feeling really blue, actually. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I, yeah, but not anymore. So, yeah, don't <laughs> take drugs, kids. <laughs> or do whatever you want, but yeah, <laughs> in moderation. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I was, I, I started to feel like I was on drugs. I just feel like I started to feel that there's a lot of... Um, yeah, there's, there's this whole uh, other feeling in life that you can get from inside. And I started to feel, you know, from one spectrum where I was really low to a really high and to a really high mode and high energy. And I was like, wow, like, oh my God, like, it's possible. I can like people again. I, I can like myself again. And I can go out and I just want to talk to people. And it was really amazing. And that was like a like a wow moment like whoa there's something into meditation another thing was i was uh 
I, I love these meditation courses. So I went to another one and it was a Vipassana course and your uh, 10 days without speaking and without any outside um, outside yeah, things, you yeah. know, like mobile phone and stuff. Yeah. And I went there and I was uh, meditating and I was talking to this one person uh, after a meditation. I hadn't had any contact to people and so on. Um, and when we started to talk, I just started to like... <sighs> like like feel I, I i felt uh like so much like love and so much of compassion and i said to it was hard to look at her face because there was so much like purple com- purple color coming out from her and i just felt like 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 wow like it's just love and it's just like the life is love and and that's it and it was it was this and that was for that lasted for days like wow. uh Still sometimes, yeah, still sometimes when uh, we talk of the heart, perhaps, I think it, it happens then because then the whole energy shifts in the room and it just feels like this, um, uh, like a different energy than normally. And, and it's like this, it's almost like stuff starts to, yeah, a bit like change, a bit become like. Oh, what, what, what do you think? More. What do you think that is, Alexandra? Like, what do you think that is that's happening right there? Do you think it's the neurology of your brain shifting? Do you think it's higher consciousness? Do you think you're tapping into your psychic ability? Like, what do you think that is in that moment? Mm, that's a really good question because you know I was always like a like a really science person. I like to uh, have an answer to everything, right? Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, and sometimes it's so difficult to like get answers. Damn, I really want to like. I would so like to hear of your opinion as well of like how all this happens and so on. Yeah, yeah. Of what I think. Yeah, I hope we can get there. <laughs> I'll give you. I'll give you an opinion in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. Um, so I think, hmm, like, because everything is energy, right? Yeah, and. Perhaps it's like, you know, I remember this one uh, study they had in, um, in like metaphysics and it's like there's these molecules and atoms all the time here and it depends on what we are concentrating on, what we can then see and kind of like feel. So maybe it's like tapping into this other energy which there would be love and maybe those molecules and atoms then activates in that moment but I, but I also feel you know because um like there has been moments uh in meditation or in tantra one of the experiences which was also mystical was like it feels like there's something else behind all the thoughts and behind all the you know opinions or who am i or all this and it's like kind of like something which is like ungraspable and it's like like it's something maybe maybe it's you know some people call it the presence it's like pure presence it's like uh yeah yeah it's it's difficult to explain i get it completely but like for me for me so i'm a scientist okay first and foremost behind the magician and the mentalist and the hypnotist and i've examined kind of the human brain a lot Uh, And uh, now I'm open to all ideas, right? So I'm a skeptic, but I'm an open-minded skeptic. Now that's an interesting statement, okay? So I'm a skeptic as far as I love examining things, I love looking at things from the outside and being skeptical, but I'm open-minded. So in other words, that's very different than being a hardened skeptic. I don't like myself being a hardened skeptic. I want to be open to the world. I want to be curious about things, then examine those things, then formulate my own opinion based on the information that I find. So for me, having examined meditation and hypnosis uh, like in depth, so I really believe that we have the ability to change the neurology of our brain. I also believe that we have an ability to tap into places in our brain that we never thought possible. But that's very different for me than perhaps what other people sometimes believe in, which is like you know touching into another world or another plane. I'm not so sure about that personally. Uh, again, I'm still open to the concept of it, but for me, I just think that the brain still is massively unexplored, even with all of the technology that we have and so on. Um, so for example, right now, let's do an example right now. I've got a piece of paper and a bulldog clip here, and you don't know what's inside here, do you? No. 
No, there's no way you could know. Okay, so here's the concept. I'm gonna just hold this here in full view so you can keep an eye on it, okay? I want you to think of any word in the English language, but any, a random word. So I don't want this word to be do, to do with like uh, tantric. I don't want it to be do, uh, this word to be uh, involved with yoga. In other words, I want it to be a really random word that you didn't even know you're going to think of until this exact moment in time. So name any okay. word that you want in the English language out loud. Uh, algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> algorithm. Now that's such an interesting yeah. word, algorithm. Now we were talking about science just a few moments ago. So do you believe that I could have influenced you to randomly say the word, word algorithm just because that we were talking about science a few moments ago? Do you believe that? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, like it, it probably like popped in my head because we were speaking of it. Exactly. So. But here's the crazy thing. You could have named any word you wanted in the English language. This piece of paper has been in full view. I'm just going to take it off. And I want you to read out loud, please, exactly what this says. Predict that Alexander will say, fuck off. Fuck. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> Motherfuck, no way. You know, another word. <laughs> Let's do more of this. Another word in my head was food, but then I was like, nah, like I'm not gonna say that. I say algorithm. Algorithm, yeah. That's exactly what I want oh you to say. I'll put, it, I'll put it back inside there for God the next damn. <laughs> you have you have me between your finger, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um oh so God. so let's get back to so tell me a little bit about tantric and what that's all about, what it means and how how you use it in your work. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So Tantra is really like, there's many different paths of Tantra, like there's many different paths of yoga. So I'm just going to talk about the Tantra, which I am more inclined to, uh, which is Neo Tantra. And it's about use, using sexual energy for your most best benefit. And I use this in my work or in my life as a mean to... Um, charge my battery as I mean to uh, walk out to life and, you know, grow my boundaries or have good confidence or have amazing sex life as well. And have, yeah, like untabooing sexuality in general. Sure. For me, it's really, yeah, for me, it has become really important to um, unshame sexuality and unshame anything that is in, you know, our... Uh, how we want to represent our represent ourselves in life. Um, so how I use Tantra is with different meditations and with different uh, practices like somatic practices and yeah and yeah it's it's like really yeah it's it's amazing a breath work and movement and so on. So do you do you, like aside from on social media which is where obviously I connected with you do you do this like as a coach do you coach people in Tantra or how do you share your your knowledge? Ah, uh -huh, yeah. So I did some coaching in India and in Finland I haven't because um, I have to do like, I want to have this like um, funding to start a business in Finland because I'm, yeah, I'm too scared to start it otherwise. But in India I did some coaching and here in Finland I'm not yet doing, but hopefully in a really, really, really short time I will. So yeah. <laughs> so I also know that like training is really important uh, to you. So I've seen that you you lift some pretty heavy weights sometimes. So uh, yeah, how long like, have you been how long have you been training, and how important do you find that is for your mindset? Hmm. Uh, I've been training for uh, in in the gym like on and off since I was fifty years old. Uh, more more of like bodybuilding and this powerlifting thing for a good perhaps four years, four years, three years, something yeah. like that. And um, hum, hmm, I find like, you know, uh, nowadays I find it's not as important for my mindset as previously, because nowadays I find that I can recharge myself through tantric practices or through yoga. But I, I love the, I love muscles and I love the also hmm, maybe like a balance between, you know, the tantra, the flowiness and somehow like the really you could say yin, like, you know, more relaxed type of uh, practices. Okay. So the gym is like more like an action, like a fiery, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, like you can get this <laughs> other type of energy out of it. So it's like maybe a good balance. And 
I find, yeah, I find gym being more of the muscle thing, but actually also, yeah, it's, it's good for the, for the other energies. Yeah. But if, yeah, if you were to like, give, so, so, if you were to give some of our viewers right now, like we'll call it a tantric, t am I saying right? I don't even know. Is it tantric or tantra? Uh, tantra actually. Tantra. Okay. Okay, so if, I was, if you were to give some of our listeners and viewers right now, like just one or two top Tantra tips, what would those tips be? Hmm. If you would like to have a Tantra to your everyday life, I would say a tip, for example, to use your five senses, to use all of your senses to come to this moment. Uh, for example, I have this glass of water here, so I would feel how it feels in my hands. And when yeah. you... If we can say it's like coffee, for example, you can like smell how the coffee smells like as if you are smelling it for the first time in your life. I mean, you drink it, you drink as if it's the first sip of anything that you take in your whole life. And this really takes you to this moment and it makes everything feel like uh, very good when you implement this, for example, in listening to music or going to the gym or doing any activity when you do it with such uh, presence, it feels completely different than um than just doing stuff in autopilot and it, it uh, yeah, it, it feels really good. It's very good also if you want to like have de-stressing or some, something like that. So it's a really fast thing. And then another thing, uh, we can go to like the sexual part. Uh, yeah, also using this in sex, like, oh my God, it, not just like, you know, touching yourself or being with your partner, like just doing something as you yeah. think it should go, like it should be like a performance, like this is how it goes and this is how we should do it. Rather like coming into the moment that really feeling the skin of your partner or really skiing the, fin the skin of yourself or, and not or, and <laughs> not having any goal, just being in the moment and letting yeah. the moment unfold. So Really well, using I, your I, five senses would be. Well, I, I think it's fantastic because look, for me, when I'm out in nature, so a lot of people don't know this about me and I, I like sharing also. So like I've got what I call green fingers. In other words, like I forage in the forest during uh, like autumn time for mushrooms with my kids. Like we forage right now, we're foraging for wild garlic. But like that, I just teach even my kids just to be in the moment, to actually really activate their senses in nature, connect with nature. Um, and for me, I think it's fantastic. Just that tip that you gave is you can do that literally just with a glass of water. Just actually appreciate that exact moment in time mm -hmm. and use all of your senses in that moment in time uh, and even water has a smell sometimes so just to smell the water touch the water taste the water and that might sound i suppose very esoterical maybe to some people but i actually think that that's what people need to do in the days that we're in they need to connect with every moment that they're in uh, in order to live a fulfilled life so i actually think they're fantastic tips um what are, what is your long-term goal like do you set goals for yourself and how do you achieve those goals hmm yeah, I, I do have a few or one uh, long term goal, which I would like to do or have manifested in hopefully 10 year time um, and <laughs> short term goal. Sorry, <laughs> the Delhi is still in my um, lungs, <laughs> which um, Delhi, uh, Delhi. I was like living there for a few years and like there's so oh. much pollution. So it's like, <laughs> oh, you're still clearing all that out. Got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, all the toxins. Um, so my short-term goal is to start the coaching here in Finland and uh, to have an awesome online coaching thing going on because I would like yeah. to have my job to be mobile so that I can also travel at the same time. It's really important for me to yeah, get out and explore life. Um, and how I achieve my goals. Do you want to hear my long-term goal? Or should I like... No, I want to hear it all. Yeah, yeah. so tell us your long-term goal. All right, yeah. all right. All right. <laughs> My long-term goal, uh, I would love to uh, have a tantric kind of house or like a, um, a shelter. Uh, I don't know if shelter is a good word for this, but uh, a place for women and for men to get their crown on, to have... Uh, pr different practices and also therapy to get like really 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 amazing um yeah their soul inner fire back and yeah. this would be for people who have been like in dangerous situations or people who have yeah. been uh you know like in yeah like in places where they have uh 
lost the hope of uh, getting their fire back. So I would like to do a house for uh, yeah, beautiful people to get their crown on and then build their life back. And they can then like, yeah, after that, go back to life. And we would help them with the career and with everything to like, Amazing. they can, yeah, get out awesome stuff. Yeah. And in your, in your head, is that going to be in Finland or will it be somewhere else, do you think? Somewhere else, yeah. Okay. Why is that? Why would it be somewhere else? Uh, maybe because in Finland, like, it's a good question. I just have always seen, like, it's somewhere a warm place. I was in Asia for, like, many, many years. So maybe that's why I feel it's going to be in Asia. Uh, and also, perhaps because in Finland, maybe there's not so many problems with people who need this. Sure. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not enough, not enough people have problems in Finland. I've never been to Finland. Are you? I've no, I know nothing about Finland. Tell us. Like, are Finnish people? Are you very reserved? Are you? Are you very open-minded? Like in general, like if you were to look at the populace in fin, Finland, what are the Finnish people like? <laughs> I have no idea. I hope no Finnish people will watch this. Um, <laughs> Finnish people are awesome. They're like, they're like, um, they're like quite reserved. But when you get to their, when you knock on their hard shell and you get into their shell, they yeah. are like really. Um, you can trust them a lot. You know, they are like really good, amazing people, but a little bit reserved and a uh, little bit like. Uh, you know, we had social social distancing before even this whole situation. Oh, okay. So I would say that's that's like a Finnish people in general. You see that? But you oh see no, that? I'm, I don't know. I don't. I haven't been here for a long time. So. <laughs> <laughs> don't backtrack. Don't backtrack. If that's the way you think of them, you got to stick with it. I mean, here in Ireland, that's why the Irish people, I think, are we're really struggling right now with all of these lockdowns because we've been like the longest lockdown country. Um, not necessarily in the world, but certainly in Europe, oh. we're, we're the longest lockdown. And in Ireland, we're very social creatures. And that's why that problem now is starting to exacerbate itself here. Like people are really feeling like we need to get out, and meet people and stuff. So it's so interesting that Finland is a little bit different than that, like that uh, out there, you're already kind of socially distant, distancing. Now, I want to check something. I'm going to cut to an overhead shot here. I need to see, can you see this overhead shot? So are you able to see that shot there? Uh-huh. Okay, yes, perfect. It's, it's like Good. five cards, right? Perfect, yes. So these, are, are you familiar with these symbols? What they mean? Mm, no, but I would assume like water, that it looks like fire, but I'm not sure, nah. Okay, so what we have here is we've got the circle, plus sign, wavy lines, square, and a star. So these represent the ESP symbols that were uh, invented, if you like, by Dr. Ryan and Duke University many, many moons ago to test people for extrasensory perception. That's what they're actually used for, okay? So we're going to test your Ooh. kind of psychic ability right now, Alexandra, okay? Uh, do you feel like you might awesome. be psychic? I feel so, yeah. I hope so. Okay, well, I, did, we're going to... I did today YouTube how to become more psychic, actually. <laughs> oh, wow. So this will be interesting to see if it worked, okay? Because what I have out here is I've got another set of these. So as you can see, I've got a circle. I've got a plus sign. I've got a wavy lines. I've got a square and a star. I've got a second set, okay? So here's the idea. I'm going to mix these up mm -hmm. face down so you don't know which one is which. So I'll give them a good mix. I'll take them out of shot even for a second so you really don't know and you can't tell which one is which. And then I'll spread them out again yeah. like so. So now you don't know which one is which. And I don't want you to know. So here's the interesting thing, okay? I'm going to take one of them out like so. So this one here, okay? This one here. Do you believe this is the circle, the plus sign, the wavy lines, the square, or the star? What do you reckon? Let me see. I reckon this card here is... Uh, like, at first I was like, it's the waiver line, but now I'm like, it's the plus. Or, ooh, hmm. <laughs> Let's, oh my God, I want to say square as well. Okay, oh, let's go. Is that right? <gasps> it's a square. Awesome, awesome. Okay, okay, let's go again. That's one out of five. Let's mix them up again. I'll put the square back in. Okay, and uh, let's take yeah. another one. I'll take another one out in just a second. Okay, I'll mix them up. Mix, 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 mix. I'm going to keep mixing them up here in front of you. So, oh, I dropped one. That's okay. Okay, let's get that one up. Mix, 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 mix. Okay, so you don't know which one is which. Okay, let me take out another one. 
All right, let's take out one out of the middle there. Okay, this one here. Which one do you think this one might be? Okay. Uh, I think this one is uh, the circle. The circle. Okay, so I'll place it up there by the circle. This next one here, which one do you think this might be? Yeah. Uh, that is... Do you see like how I, I got so, like, so confident after that square? I'm like in one I second. Know. Like, yeah, I know which one it is. <laughs> Uh, I say this one is uh, uh, like the plus or the star. Uh, let's go with star. The star. Let's take it's, a look first. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh ah! this is star. Oh my god! Okay. <laughs> let's put it down okay. there. Okay, this next one here. What do you think this one might be? I think this one is uh, this one is the waver line. The wavy lines. Okay, this one here. Shit. Hopefully, uh, this one is. Um, dun, 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 dun. I haven't said circle. I don't think it's it's. Oh, I think oh, this one circle. is waver. Oh, okay, there is there is circle. Okay, okay. Plus or the square? Plus, plus, plus. Uh, plus and then this one here would be the square. Plus, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Your, so that's where you put them out. Now listen. If you got one of these correct, well, we know you got one, that's just a coincidence, right? If you get two correct in scientific circles, that's considered a hit. So a hit meaning that there's something going on. If you get three right, they do believe that that's some kind of psychic activity. Very rarely, it's very, very rare that anybody would get all five, okay? So let's just take a look. So we know you got the star, right? Okay. Let's take a look what you got uh -huh. here. Did you get the square? Oh, you got mm. the square. Holy fuck. It's a hit. Oh, oh, you got the wavy lines. No way, no way. You got the plus sign. No. You got the circle. No, no, you're doing something. No, no, <laughs> Alexander, you are our psychic superstar. That's crazy. Psychic superstar, <laughs> Nice, nice. <laughs> so I'm the picture of this, so I kind of prove yeah, everyone now. Yeah, yeah, I'll send you a picture later anyway. I'll send it to you later. Oh, great, great, awesome. Okay. So tell me this, <laughs> if you were to give people out there, to, to wrap this up, if you were to give people out there like one piece of takeaway right now in life, like your ethos, what you believe that you can share with the world, what would that be? Hmm. You can do whatever you want, like, even if you want to become a, a, a spaceship person who wants to go to space, you can definitely do something to do with that. Like, if it's not going to be the, the moon, it's going to be something which will fulfill you as if you are going to go to the moon. Like, you can, yeah, you deserve to live the life that you want to live and to do the things that you want to do. And if you don't like something, change it or accept it. But if you really, if you really don't like it and you don't feel happy in it, change it. You really can. You can. And also you can have awesome fucking sexual experiences and awesome energies which you can take out to your life and yeah, live it joyously. So I absolutely yeah. love that take I love that takeaway because for me I, I believe in what you say, but I believe it even stronger. I believe you have an obligation to live an extraordinary life. So like that, if you don't like something, you've got to change it. You've got to follow your passion. Yes. And some people would listen to you saying that or me saying that and say, and they would say, I know the response, they would say, you know, it's not that easy. And I, mm. I'm going to guess that you would be the same as me. I'm not saying it's easy and I bet you're not saying that it's mm. easy. I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying that that's your obligation is to fulfill your potential. Your obligation is to live an extraordinary life. So like that, if you don't like something, change it. If you're in a circumstance that you can't change, change your attitude to that circumstance. And uh, I think they're beautiful takeaways. Alexandra, I could talk to you all day long, but we've got to wrap Same. it up. Um, tell me this, uh, where can people find you? Uh, people can find me from my Instagram at the moment and Hopefully soon, not hopefully, soon also from my website and YouTube once I start to do YouTube again. Uh, but now from my Instagram, Alexandra Alblad. Uh, maybe you can put the name here because it's a really difficult surname. We're, we're, we're going to put it in the description below so people will find awesome. Alexandra on Instagram in the description below. Click on that description. She's got some fantastic content up there. Alexandra, it's been an absolute pleasure. You are psychic. Remember that word, algorithm, Ooh! for the rest of your life. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> yes, bye. Thank you. Thanks, Alexandra.
Cheers. <laughs>